Okay, welcome to the first video in our series on dissections. The first thing I wanted to do is just go over the tools that you'll have in your dissection kit. To start off with the simplest and probably most useful tool, you have your pair of fine scissors. So these have more of a point. Uh, they're good for fine precision cutting. You'll actually find that these are much more helpful than your scalpel for most of the cutting tasks that you'll be doing when it comes to our, our uh, dissections in class. These are your heavy scissors. This is good for cutting through like, the outside of organisms. Uh, for example, this will be very helpful when we're doing the squid to cut through the outside of the mantle, which is kind of thick. These are good for heavy cutting, but not great for precision. Uh, if you need precision, go with the smaller dissecting scissors. Um, all of your dissecting kits have two pairs of tweezers. Uh, some of them will be curved, others will be straight like this. This is helpful because you can have multiple people in your group helping you. As long as they have the, the tweezers, you're not really going to get in each other's way. This is also very helpful if you need to maybe hold some tissue while someone else is cutting. You can have one person hold and the other person cut with the scissors. You should never have your hands near anything that's being used to cut with, whether they be scissors or the scalpel. You always use the tweezers to hold things. That's why each kit will have two, so that way you can have multiple people using them at once. Uh, the probe isn't helpful for too many things other than for uh, pointing to parts. If you need precision when it comes to pointing to a certain area, you can certainly use this. Um, the curved probe is also good for pointing at things. Uh, sometimes these are helpful for getting the other items out of the kit. Uh, the curved probe or the blunt probe is helpful because this will not damage tissue. So there are some times when you have to maybe scrape tissue away, but you want to scrape it carefully. Or if you want to point to something and you're worried about damaging your specimen, you can use this one. It's always a safe item to use. The final thing, which everyone's always the most excited about, is the scalpel. Um, unfortunately, you won't actually see one of these in your dissection kit until our last dissection when we get to the rat. These are extremely sharp. As you can probably see in the video here, they have replaceable blades. So for each dissection, you get a brand new blade placed on there. These things are tremendously sharp. Uh, just to give you an idea, if we have a piece of paper here, they will easily slice right through that piece of paper. These are extremely sharp instruments, and uh, because of that, you have to be very careful. The proper form for holding this is this way with your index finger sort of on the spine and then the base of the scalpel pushing into your palm to give you a nice steady platform from which to cut. You always cut away from yourself and away from your lab partners. Uh, truthfully, you don't need this very much. Most of the dissections we'll be doing, you can get away with using the scissors and these are actually much more precise for most cuttings, but for certain steps in the rat dissection, you will need to use the scalpel. So uh, this, again, will only show up in your dissection kits for the last one, but it's something you absolutely have to respect. I've never had anyone get hurt, but you have to be careful around this. It is extremely, extremely sharp. And uh, to be honest, it's a good thing. It's more dangerous to be using a dull instrument than a sharp instrument, because this will allow you to cut easily, but it'll also cut easily you know, through your finger, just as it would cut easily through our specimens. So you need to be very careful and you need to respect the scalpel. As long as you do that, you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, the final step is just to show you where everything goes when putting it away. The easiest way to make sure you do this correctly is if you're just paying attention when you're taking everything out. Everything has its own little designated spot where it belongs. The tweezers sort of get pinched down and put in that front slot. Big scissors go in first. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, small scissors on top. So if you're doing everything in an organized manner, your kit should go back together very nicely, just as you found it. Um, oftentimes, I suggest you leave them open on my desk, uh, because after you're done using this, you'll rinse it off. And if you leave it closed up, the materials never dry. So just leave them open on the front, and then the next lab group will come along and uh, make sure that all the materials are there. It's also helpful for me if you leave it open. I have to check these at the end of the lab to make sure everything's in place. And uh, it's just much easier for me to do that when they're left open. So as long as you respect the tools that are in here, you should be just fine. The uh, dissection guides will tell you which tool to use for which step, so there should be no guessing when it comes to that. Uh, make sure you answer the questions when you're finished with this video, and I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.